Track 2. Unit 1. Listening. Exercise 2. 1. B R A C K E N. 2. G O W E R. 3. J E R E M Y 4 P O L L A R D 5 V E R N O N 6 17 Seven O one nine five O six seven four two three six eight thirty first Complete IELTS Bands four to five by Guy Brookhart and Vanessa Jakeman. Published by Cambridge University Press. This recording is copyright. CD1. Track 1. Unit 1. Listening. Exercise 1. 1. R-O-M-N-E-Y 2. C-A-E R N S three B R A double G four J I C K E double L five force it that's F A W C E double T six. It costs fifty cents. Seven. My telephone number is O seven two six O five seven nine one. Eight. Thirty Lovers Road. That's L O V E R S. Track three. Unit one. Listening. Exercise five. Dubai Palm Apartments. Amanda speaking. How can I help you? Oh, hi, Amanda. I'm ringing to inquire about a holiday apartment for the month after next. OK, no problem. Let me get your details first, then I'll tell you what we've got. Is that all right? Fine, go ahead. OK. Can I have your name first, please? Yes, it's Leo Blücher. That's L-E-O. That's my first name, and my surname is B-L-U-C-H-E-R. OK, I've got that. Where are you from, just out of interest, Leo? I'm Austrian. Right, OK. And what's your address? It's number 37, Blumengasse, in Vienna. Right. Could you just spell Blumengasse for me, please, Leo? My German's not too good. Sure. It's B-L-U-M-E-N-G-A-S-S-E. Great, thanks. And what's the weather like in Vienna at the moment? It's pretty grey and rainy, I'm afraid. <laughs> Hope it's better in Dubai. Yes, it's lovely at the moment. Sunny and warm, but not too hot. Now, can you give me your phone number? Yes, 
It's four three one two, double one zero five seven. Great. So you're looking for a holiday apartment, Leo. How many people is it for? Just yourself? No, there'll be four of us: two adults and two children. Fine. And when would you like it from? Ideally, from the first of January. January the first. Okay. I'll have a look and see what we've got. How long would you like to stay? Well, it depends a little bit on the price, but I think that about nine days would be perfect. Fine. And talking of prices, what would be your maximum? Do you think? Well, I've looked on the internet, but I don't know if I'm being realistic if I say two hundred euros per day.、Uh, things seem to range from one hundred and fifty to well over four hundred. Well, it depends where, of course, but I think we could probably find something for you at that price. Great. There are various other things, though. Our children are quite small, and we don't want to take them to restaurants all the time. So one thing we'd really appreciate is a fully equipped kitchen, so we can do some cooking. Yes, I completely understand. Do you have any other special requirements? Yes, we live in the city centre, hundreds of miles from the sea. So we'd really like to be able to see it from our apartment. Okay, I'll note that down. All our apartments come with air conditioning and central heating, by the way. Oh dear! One thing I don't like is the noise of air conditioning in the background. Can you make sure it's as quiet as possible? Yes, I'll look into that. Anything else? Yes, just one more thing.、Uh, we'd like to hire a car while we're in Dubai, so we'll need to have a parking space. I think we don't want to have to walk a long way from the car to the apartment. I think you're quite right. I'll look into all these things and make a list of possible apartments. Do you have an email address so I can send them to you? Track three, Unit One, Listening, Exercise Five. Dubai Palm Apartments. Amanda speaking. How can I help you? Oh, hi, Amanda. I'm ringing to inquire about a holiday apartment for the month after next. Okay, no problem. Let me get your details first, then I'll tell you what we've got. Is that all right? Fine, go ahead. Okay. Can I have your name first, please? Yes, it's Leo Blucher. That's L E O. That's my first name, and my surname is B L U C H E R. Okay, I've got that. Where are you from? Just out of interest, Leo. I'm Austrian. Right. Okay. And what's your address? It's number thirty-seven Blumengasse in Vienna. Right. Could you just spell Blumengasse for me, please, Leo? My German's not too good. Sure. It's B L U M E N G A W S E. Great, thanks. And what's the weather like in Vienna at the moment? It's pretty grey and rainy, I'm afraid. <laughs> Hope it's better in Dubai. Yes, it's lovely at the moment. Sunny and warm, but not too hot. Now, can you give me your phone number? Yes, it's four three one two, double one zero five seven. Great. So you're looking for a holiday apartment, Leo. How many people is it for? Just yourself? No, there'll be four of us: two adults and two children. Fine. And when would you like it from? Ideally, from the first of January. January the first. Okay. 
I'll have a look and see what we've got. How long would you like to stay? Well, it depends a little bit on the price, but I think that about nine days would be perfect. Fine. And talking of prices, what would be your maximum? Do you think? Well, I've looked on the internet, but I don't know if I'm being realistic if I say two hundred euros per day. Things seem to range from one hundred and fifty to well over four hundred. Well, it depends where, of course, but I think we could probably find something for you at that price. Great. There are various other things, though. Our children are quite small, and we don't want to take them to restaurants all the time. So one thing we'd really appreciate is a fully equipped kitchen, so we can do some cooking. Yes, I completely understand. Do you have any other special requirements? Yes, we live in the city centre, hundreds of miles from the sea. So we'd really like to be able to see it from our apartment. Okay, I'll note that down. All our apartments come with air conditioning and central heating, by the way. Oh dear! One thing I don't like is the noise of air conditioning in the background. Can you make sure it's as quiet as possible? Yes, I'll look into that. Anything else? Yes, just one more thing.、Uh, we'd like to hire a car while we're in Dubai, so we'll need to have a parking space. I think we don't want to have to walk a long way from the car to the apartment. I think you're quite right. I'll look into all these things and make a list of possible apartments. Do you have an email address so I can send them to you? Track four, Unit One, Speaking, Exercise One. Can you tell me what you do, Hanan? Do you work, or are you a student? Yes, I'm a student. I'm studying medicine because I want to be a doctor. At the moment, I'm studying English as well because I hope to do part of my degree course in Australia. And where do you come from? I come from Mutra in Oman. Can you describe Mutra a little bit for me? Yes, it's quite a large city by the sea, and also near the mountains. It's very beautiful and very old. It's very hot in the summer, but the winter is usually very pleasant. Also, Mutra is an important port. Can you tell me what you do, Quan? Do you work or are you a student? I'm a student. I'm studying economics at Chonju University at the moment. And where do you come from, Kwan? I come from a small village near Chonju in Korea. Can you describe your village to me? Well, it's in the mountains. The people work as farmers, and they are very friendly. It's a good place to live, but not much happens there. Track five, unit one, speaking, exercises three and four. What do you like about the area where you live? Oh,、um, I really like the sea and the part of the city just by the sea because it's very beautiful, and there are always lots of people there. I live in the suburbs, but I enjoy going shopping in the city center. There are plenty of good shops. And I like buying clothes. What things in Mutra do you not like?、Mm, I'm not very keen on the hot weather, and the hot wind from the desert is something I don't like.、Mm. How is the area changing? They're building more houses and roads. It's getting busier. What do you like about the area where you live, Quan? I find walking in the mountains very enjoyable. And another good thing is the people, because they are very friendly and generous. I think people in my village are very happy and relaxed. What things in your village do you not like? Well, I live by a busy main road, and I find the traffic very unpleasant. 
I really dislike the noise of cars and lorries. How is the area changing? There's more traffic, so the village is becoming noisier. Also, young people are leaving the village, so it isn't so lively. Track six, unit one, pronunciation, exercise two. Can you tell me what you do, Hanan? Do you work, or are you a student? Yes, I'm a student. I'm studying medicine because I want to be a doctor. And where do you come from? I come from Mutra, in Oman. Can you tell me what you do, Kwan? Do you work, or are you a student? I'm a student. I'm studying economics at Chonju University at the moment. And where do you come from, Kwan? I come from a small village near Chonju in Korea. Track six, unit one, pronunciation, exercise two. Can you tell me what you do, Hanan? Do you work, or are you a student? Yes, I'm a student. I'm studying medicine because I want to be a doctor. And where do you come from? I come from Mutra, in Oman. Can you tell me what you do, Kwan? Do you work, or are you a student? I'm a student. I'm studying economics at Chonju University at the moment. And where do you come from, Kwan? I come from a small village near Chonju in Korea. Unit One, Track Two. One. Have you moved into your new house yet? Not yet, but we've got a date. When's that? Two weeks today, on Friday the thirteenth. Two. Have you come far today? No, just from Crawford. Dorford? Where's that? No, Crawford. That's C R A W F O R D. Three. What's your phone number? Do you want my home number or my mobile? You'd better give me your mobile. Okay, it's o eight seven o two nine two seven two o. Four. Do you know Sue's address? I want to send her a birthday card. Sure. It's seventy Sydney Avenue, Lowestoft. Seventeen Sydney Avenue. Thanks. No, seventy, and that's Sydney with an I, not a Y. S I D N E Y. Unit one, track three. One. What's your name? Julienne Bailey. Did you say Juliet? No, Julienne. J U L I E W N E. And Bailey with an I? That's right. B A I L E Y. Two. I tried calling you last night, but I couldn't get through. Oh, sorry, I was out. Next time, try my mobile. What's the number? Got a pen? Okay. It's o eight six five seven o double one five eight. Three. Could you give me your address, please? Sure. It's one hundred and thirteen, Evenload Road, Fenton. One hundred and thirteen. Evenload Road.、Uh, could you spell the name of the road for me? Sure. It's E V E N 
L O D E. Thanks. Four. How long have you been here? Let me see. I arrived on the first. No, sorry. I arrived on the third of April, so I've been here for nine days. Unit One, Track Four. Hello, Good Moves Accommodation Agency. Ben speaking. How can I help? Good morning. I'm calling about an apartment on your website, and was wondering if I could have some more information. Certainly. Can I take your details before we get started? Sure. Right. What's your name, please? Okay. My name is Clarice Willard. Clarice is. C L A R I C E, and Willard, W I L L A R D. Uh huh. And、uh, have you got a contact number? Yes, I'll give you my mobile, which is O one nine two, eight seven three, four five double six. That's great. Thanks. And can I ask how you found us? Of course, a family member used you last year and recommended you, so I had a look at your website, and well, that's why I'm calling now. Okay, so which property are you interested in? The apartment on Statham Street, the one on the third floor. Uh huh. Uh, let me see. Um, ah, I'm afraid that flat's no longer available. No. No, it went this morning. It's in a really popular part of town. We do have a house on the same street. If you're interested, it's nine hundred and fifty pounds a month. Ah,、uh, no, I think that's much too expensive. I think an apartment is all we can afford. Oh, so it's not just for you? No, me and a friend. We're both starting work in the town next month. Oh right, so it's two of you.、Uh, so let's see. Do you have any preferences in terms of location? Both our jobs are in the town centre, so it would be good to be within walking distance of that, or perhaps a short bus journey away. Neither of us have a car, so we'd be relying on public transport. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. And what's your budget? I'm sorry. How much can you pay a month? Let me see. Seven、uh, hundred pounds a month is probably our limit. Each? No, that would be for the both of us. We wouldn't be able to pay more than three hundred and fifty pounds each. Oh, and that would have to include bills, not phone bills, obviously, but things like electricity, gas, and water. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. Okay. Well,、uh, we do have a place in the Bampton district, which is about ten minutes by bus from town. It's a two-bedroom apartment, and it's less than your budget at six hundred pounds a month. The bills would be extra, unfortunately, but that should still work out at less than seven hundred pounds. Although remember that electricity and gas prices are going up all the time, so I can't guarantee that. Do you have an address? I do. The apartment number is three, and it's at fifty-seven Thorny Lees Road. Hang on, let me just make a note of that. Fifty-seven Thorny Lees Road.、Uh, Thorny is T H O R N E Y, and Lees is L E Y S, and the district is called Bampton. Do you have an email address? Yes. In that case, I can send you the details, and then you can think about it. And if you're interested, I could arrange for a visit so you can see the place for yourself. How does that sound? Oh, that would be really helpful. It's Clarice underscore Willard at nt.
Track seven, unit two, listening, exercise three. Conversation one. Could you give me a contact number, please? Sure, I'll give you my mobile. It's o seven eight one six, o three eight nine two four. Thanks. We'll let you know when the glasses are ready. Track eight, conversation two. How much is the flight to Madrid? It's three hundred and forty-nine dollars. Do you have anything cheaper, say three hundred dollars? I'm afraid not. Track nine, conversation three. How old are you, Maddie? I'm sixteen. And what date's your birthday? October the twelfth. Good. So we'll be able to start the driving lessons in the second half of October. Yes. Track ten, conversation four. Shall we see each other later in the coffee bar? Okay. What time shall we meet? Um. Can you get there by four thirty? My maths class finishes at four, so yes, that should be okay. Track eleven, unit two, listening, exercise seven. Hello. Hi, Clive. Is that you? Yes. Hi, Debbie. Did you manage to see those candidates for our expedition? Yes, I did. And there was an extra one who was quite a surprise. You know, he hadn't applied, and he just turned up out of the blue. So we haven't got any details for him. Really? Tell me about him. Okay. And you can take some notes. Then we'll see what we think. Fine. First, he's called Sanjay Debashi. Okay, Sanjay is spelled S A N J A Y, right? Correct. And Debashi is D U B A S H I. D U B A S H I. Fine. Thanks. I'm just getting that down. And did you find out how old he is? Sure. He's round about our age, you know. Well, a couple of years older. He's twenty-seven. Quite a big man. Quite muscular, impressive, with a big moustache. And what does he do? Well, actually, he just says he's an office worker. You know, just one of those people with quite a routine job in an office. Mm, doesn't sound like he finds his job very interesting. Has he got any experience? Do you know of going off to remote places on foot? Yes, he's been all over the place. He was telling me all about a trip he made in a Land Rover across Central Africa from one side to the other, which sounded pretty exciting and dangerous. Great! I think it would be really interesting to cross Central Africa. I'd love to do that. Anything physical? I mean, where he actually had to walk instead of driving? You know, being so muscular, as you say.、Mm, I was coming to that. Last year, he went to Russia with some friends in their summer holidays, and they went up a mountain. Let's see,、um, mm, Mount Elbrus, it's called. Wow! Now that's really quite something. By the way, Elbrus is spelled E L B R O S, isn't it? Not quite. It's U S. Ah, okay. What qualifications does he have, which would interest us? Has he done any sort of specialist training, for example? Well, he's done a course in first aid, which may be pretty useful. If any of us get injured, he should know what to do. 
good. It might be useful to have someone who knows how to do first aid in case someone has an accident. Uh, can he swim? I didn't ask now you mention it. I forgot. But he did tell me he can hold conversations in five languages. He's not fluent in all of them, but he can get by. He grew up in India, and I suppose that helps, you know, for learning languages. Though now he lives over here. Right. What else? Uh, has he been to university, for instance? Yes, he graduated in media studies, though he says he's never worked in the media. OK. And when he's not off on expeditions to remote places, what does he like doing in his spare time? He seems to do all sorts of things. One thing he told me, which could be useful, is that he likes fishing. Yes, we'd better tell him to bring his fishing rod. That is, if we choose him. And he seems to spend a lot of time at the gym. He says he really likes to keep fit. And when you meet him, you'll believe it's true. Great. Another fitness fanatic like you. <laughs> well, sounds like I should meet him, doesn't it? When can you fix that up? Track 11. Unit 2. Listening. Exercise 7. Hello? Hi, Clive, is that you? Yes, hi, Debbie. Did you manage to see those candidates for our expedition? Yes, I did, and there was an extra one who was quite a surprise. You know, he hadn't applied, and he just turned up out of the blue, so we haven't got any details for him. Really? Tell me about him. OK, and you can take some notes, then we'll see what we think. Fine. First, he's called Sanjay Debashi. OK. Sanjay is spelled S-A-N-J-A-Y, right? Correct. And Dubashi is D-U-B-A-S-H-I. D-U-B-A-S-H-I. Fine. Thanks. I'm just getting that down. And did you find out how old he is? Sure. He's round about our age, you know. Well, a couple of years older. He's 27. Quite a big man. Quite muscular, impressive, with a big moustache. And what does he do? Well, actually, he just says he's an office worker, you know. Just one of those people with quite a routine job in an office. Mm, doesn't sound like he finds his job very interesting. Has he got any experience, do you know, of going off to remote places on foot? Yes, he's been all over the place. He was telling me all about a trip he made in a Land Rover across Central Africa from one side to the other, which sounded pretty exciting and dangerous. Great. I think it would be really interesting to cross Central Africa. I'd love to do that. Anything physical? I mean, where he actually had to walk instead of driving? You know, being so muscular, as you say. Mm, I was coming to that. Last year, he went to Russia with some friends in their summer holidays, and they went up a mountain. Let's see. Um, mm, Mount Elbrus, it's called. Wow, now that's really quite something. By the way, Elbrus is spelled E L. B-R-O-S, isn't it? Not quite. It's U-S. Ah, OK. What qualifications does he have which would interest us? Has he done any sort of specialist training, for example? Well, he's done a course in first aid, which may be pretty useful. If any of us get injured, he should know what to do. Good. It might be useful to have someone who knows how to do first aid in case someone has an accident. Uh, can he swim? I didn't ask now you mention it. I forgot. But he did tell me he can hold conversations in five languages. He's not fluent in all of them, but he can get by. 
he grew up in India, and I suppose that helps, you know, for learning languages. Though now he lives over here. Right. What else? Uh, has he been to university, for instance? Yes, he graduated in media studies. Though he says he's never worked in the media. Okay, and when he's not off on expeditions to remote places, what does he like doing in his spare time? He seems to do all sorts of things. One thing he told me, which could be useful, is that he likes fishing. Yes, we'd better tell him to bring his fishing rod. That is, if we choose him. And he seems to spend a lot of time at the gym. He says he really likes to keep fit. And when you meet him, you'll believe it's true. Great, another fitness fanatic like you. <laughs> well, sounds like I should meet him, doesn't it? When can you fix that up? Track twelve, Unit two, speaking, exercise two. So, Hussein, I'm going to ask you some questions about your childhood. Do you come from a large family or a small family? I'm sorry. Could you repeat, please? Do you come from a large family or a small family? Well, actually, it's not large or small.、Uh, what's the word? It's middle. No, no. Sorry, it's medium-sized. I am two brothers. Sorry, I have. Two brothers who are both older than me. As a child, who did you spend more time with, your family or your friends? When I was a small child, I spent more time with my family, my mother, who looked after me, and I played a lot with my brothers. Then, when I was a bit older. About ten or eleven, I started to play more with friends I made at school, because we enjoyed doing the same things. And my mother went back to her job. And when you were a child, how did you spend your free time? I think I watched television quite a lot when I was a small child, and I played computer games with my brothers. When I was older, I did a lot of sports with my friends. We went swimming, and we played tennis and football because I love doing sports. What did you enjoy most about school? I think I enjoyed doing science subjects most. I liked physics and chemistry, especially. We didn't do sports at school, so I did those in my free time. And when you were at school, who do you think was your best teacher? I think. Perhaps my chemistry teacher, because she explained things very clearly. Also, she was very—I'm not sure about the word—interested.、Uh, no, enthusiastic. She made us do tests. I mean,、uh, experiments in the laboratory. So we learned a lot. I never missed one of her lessons. Track thirteen, Unit two, speaking, exercise three. So, Hussein, I'm going to ask you some questions about your childhood. Do you come from a large family or a small family? I'm sorry. Could you repeat, please? Do you come from a large family or a small family? Well. Actually, it's not large or small.、Uh, what's the word? It's middle. No, no. Sorry, it's medium-sized. I am two brothers. Sorry, I have two brothers who are both older than me.
Track 14, Unit 2, Speaking, Exercise 4. As a child, who did you spend more time with? Your family or your friends? When I was a small child, I spent more time with my family, my mother, who looked after me, and I played a lot with my brothers. Then, when I was a bit older, about 10 or 11, I started to play more with friends I made at school because we enjoyed doing the same things. And my mother went back to her job. And when you were a child, how did you spend your free time? I think I watched television quite a lot when I was a small child, and I played computer games with my brothers. When I was older, I did a lot of sports with my friends. We went swimming, and we played tennis and football because I love doing sports. What did you enjoy most about school? I think I enjoyed doing science subjects most. I liked physics and chemistry, especially. We didn't do sports at school, so I did those in my free time. And when you were at school, who do you think was your best teacher? I think. Perhaps my chemistry teacher, because she explained things very clearly. Also, she was very, I'm not sure about the word,、uh, interested. No, enthusiastic. She made us do tests, I mean,、uh, experiments in the laboratory, so we learned a lot. I never missed one of her lessons. Track 12, Unit 2, Speaking, Exercise 2. So, Hussein, I'm going to ask you some questions about your childhood. Do you come from a large family or a small family? I'm sorry, could you repeat, please? Do you come from a large family or a small family? Well, Actually, it's not large or small.、Uh, what's the word? It's middle. No, no, sorry, it's medium sized. I am two brothers. Sorry, I have two brothers who are both older than me. As a child, who did you spend more time with? Your family or your friends? When I was a small child, I spent more time with my family, my mother, who looked after me, and I played a lot with my brothers. Then, when I was a bit older, about 10 or 11, I started to play more with friends I made at school because we enjoyed doing the same things. And my mother went back to her job. And when you were a child, how did you spend your free time? I think I watched television quite a lot when I was a small child, and I played computer games with my brothers. When I was older, I did a lot of sports with my friends. We went. Swimming, and we played tennis and football because I love doing sports. What did you enjoy most about school? I think I enjoyed doing science subjects most. I liked physics and chemistry, especially. We didn't do sports at school, so I did those in my free time. And when you were at school, who do you think was your best teacher? I think perhaps my chemistry teacher, 
because she explained things very clearly. Also, she was very, I'm not sure about the word, uh, interested. No, enthusiastic. She made us do tests, I mean uh, experiments in the laboratories, so we learned a lot. I never missed one of her lessons. Track 15, Unit 2, Pronunciation, Exercise 1. 1. Asked. 2. Mended. 3. Called. Track 16, Unit 2, Pronunciation, Exercise 2. Appeared. Asked. Ended. Enjoyed. Finished. Hoped. Improved. Invented. Liked. Looked. Needed. Occurred. Played. Remembered. Started. Wanted. Watched. Wished. Unit 2, Track 6. Can I have your second name, please? Sure. It's Walliams. That's W A double L I. A M S. Where do you live? 37 Beach Street, Wokingham. Beach is B double E C H. When were you born? On the 5th of April, 1984. Do you have a contact number? Sure. It's 0529 865 2411. What's your job? I'm a shop manager. How far do you travel from your house to your place of work? 12 kilometres. How do you get there? I usually take the bus. Have you got any hobbies or interests? Oh, yes. I like cooking, cycling and travel. Unit 2, Track 5 A do you have a contact number? B. How far do you travel to work? C. How do you get to work? D. Have you got any hobbies or interests? E. What do you do? F. Can I have your second name, please? G. 
When were you born? H. Where do you live? Unit 2, Track 6. Can I have your second name, please? Sure. It's Walliams. That's W A L L I A M S. Where do you live? 37 Beach Street, Wokingham. Beach is B E C H. When were you born? On the 5th of April, 1984. Do you have a contact number? Sure. It's 0529 865 2411. What's your job? I'm a shop manager. How far do you travel from your house to your place of work? 12 kilometres. How do you get there? I usually take the bus. Have you got any hobbies or interests? Oh yes, I like cooking, cycling and travel. Unit 2, Track 7 Hello, Eddie. It's Bridget. Oh, hi, Bridget. Listen, Eddie, are you still free to do an article for the college magazine? Sure. Is there anything in particular you'd like me to write about? Well, the next issue is about people's lives. You know, people who have done something interesting or exciting. Anyway, I've got someone lined up, and I was wondering if you could interview them and then write the article. All right. That's fine with me. Great. Have you got a pen? Yes. OK. Take this down. His name is Tom Coogan. Tom... Coogan. That's C-O-O-G-A-N. Got that? Sure. And what does he do? He's a travel writer. I don't think I've heard of him. What else can you tell me about him? How old is he? What's he written? That sort of thing. OK. He's 42 years old. Uh, and he's written 10 or 12 books. Let me just check that. Uh-huh. 12 books, including his latest. Oh, and he also presents a travel programme on TV. All right. Now, his latest book is about a journey he made across the Gobi Desert on horseback. It took him six months, apparently. Anyway, I think he'd like to talk about that, so make sure you ask lots of questions. Fine. I'd better look at a copy. What's it called? It's called Has Anyone Seen My Horse? I've got a copy here which I can lend you. OK. And why does he want to talk about that book in particular? It's just won him an award. Really? What kind? Travel Book of the Year. Oh, wow. That's pretty impressive. Exactly. So, like I say, ask lots of questions about it. Now, I've arranged for you to meet him on the 21st of October. That's two weeks on Friday. Is that OK? It should be. Have you got a time for that? Not yet. He wants you to call him beforehand to arrange that. I'll give you his contact number. It's 0722... No, hang on. It's 0772 921 And where am I supposed to meet him? He suggested his place, which is good as it's not far from the college. It's 138 Lonsdale Avenue, Summertown. Lonsdale is L O N 
S D A L E. Yeah, I think I know where Lonsdale Avenue is. You did say a hundred and thirty-eight, didn't you? Right. Oh, and I suggest that you take a look at his website as well. It's got loads of information, so you might want to ask him about some of his other trips. It's at www.tomcooganbooks.com. All right. Thanks for that. I'll let you know how I get on. Great. Thanks, Eddie. Good luck. Track seventeen, Unit three, listening, exercise three. Good evening and welcome aboard the Pride of Pool. In this recorded announcement, we'll give you details of some of the facilities available on board this ship. You're currently standing in the reception area in the centre of B deck. If you're feeling hungry after a long day's travelling. Go up the stairs to A deck, where you'll find the restaurant. The restaurant caters for all appetites, with anything from a light snack to a full three-course meal. The restaurant will be open from the moment the ship leaves port to half an hour before arrival. Next to the restaurant on A deck, in the lounge, there are reclining seats with music headphones if you want to relax. The headphones are free, but people using this area are encouraged to keep noise to a minimum, so that other passengers can enjoy themselves and sleep or read if they wish. For those of you who'd like some entertainment, just next door to us on this deck is a forty-seat cinema showing the latest full-length feature films. The cinema program is available here at reception. But you'll have to buy the tickets themselves at the cinema entrance just before you go in. Just next to the cinema is the staircase leading down to the cabins on C deck. To access your cabin, just show your boarding pass to a steward, who will give you the key. On this deck, that is B deck. You'll also find an area where you can either play games in our special electronic games arcade, or do your shopping. Just beyond that, on the same level, people who want a bit of fresh air or just want to see the sea can go out onto the viewing deck, which is in the open air. Make sure you wear a jacket or coat, as it can be quite cold and windy. Track eighteen, Unit three, listening, exercise six. Now for some further details. This voyage is an overnight trip. The ship leaves port at seven p.m., and the journey takes just over twelve hours and forty-five minutes, reaching our destination at about eight tomorrow morning. This is for the convenience of those wishing to catch the nine o'clock train, which leaves from the ferry terminal. Passengers with children in their party are informed that there is a special section in the restaurant with kids' food and a play area. People with children are encouraged to turn up early to get a place, as the section is very popular. Make this a trip to remember. Here at the information desk, you can obtain a souvenir ship's keyring for four euros fifty. You can upgrade from a tourist class cabin to a first class cabin, and you can get your train tickets here, which will save you time queuing in the station tomorrow morning. If you buy them on the ship, you can get them for twenty percent off. For those using the lounge and wishing to check their email. There's a wireless connection, but you'll have to bring your own laptop. You can also watch the latest TV programs there, or in the coffee bar next to the restaurant. Finally, 
a unique feature on this crossing only. Anyone who buys a fashion item from our wonderful range of men's and women's clothes in the shopping area has the chance to win a free holiday. All you have to do is complete a sentence starting, I like Sealand ferries because, and the best sentence wins the prize of a holiday in Switzerland with tickets to a three day music festival included. Talk to any member of staff for more details. Track 19, Unit 3, Speaking, Exercise 2. Well, I'm going to talk about a trip I made across Australia. The transport I used was a motorbike. It wasn't a new bike, it was, what's the word, second hand, and I bought it because I wanted to see Australia. I didn't want to use public transport because I wanted to be independent. I had a month's holiday before I started my course, and I made a trip with a friend, a Chinese girl, because I was frightened of traveling alone. I met her at a language school where we studied English together. We traveled along the south coast and saw some of the desert. The good thing about the journey was that we met a lot of other people who were traveling. We went to places which are difficult to reach on public transport, and the trip was quite cheap. Also, the motorbike had quite a powerful engine, so it was fast and exciting. The bad things were the rain and the heat, because they made us tired. I have great memories of the trip, because I felt really free. We could go where we liked. Also, we met some very friendly people, and we saw a lot of interesting places. I still have friends who I made during the trip. In all, I think it was the best journey I've ever made. Thank you. Track 20. Unit 3. Pronunciation. Exercise 1. Motorbike. Track 21, Unit 3, Pronunciation, Exercise 2 Transport Studying Independent Holiday University Powerful Exciting. Expensive. Memories. Interesting. Unit 3. Track 8. Hello everyone and welcome aboard the Sunshine Express on our journey from London to Naples. I'm Jane Sharp, the train manager, and I hope you'll all enjoy the trip. Before we depart, I'd like to tell you a bit about the train and its facilities. Now we're here on the observation deck, which is where you'll probably spend most of your trip as it offers the best views, and directly below us is, uh, well, we call it our leisure centre. There are some games machines, a television, a small library, and so on. If you've brought a laptop or computer with you, you can also get onto the internet here, as it has full Wi-Fi capability. There's also a small bar where you can get tea, coffee and light meals. For lunch and dinner, you'll use the restaurant car, which is at the front of the train. 
You'll have breakfast in your cabins, by the way, which will be brought to you by your steward. The two cars behind the restaurant are where you'll find the second-class cabins. Each cabin has seats which are changed into beds at night. You'll also find a simple basin for washing and a small fold-down table. First-class passengers, your cabins are at the back of the train. To get to them, you'll need to pass through the lounge. This can be used by everyone during the day, but is exclusive to first-class passengers after 6pm. Right at the back of the train, basically as far as you can go, is my office. If anyone needs to see me, though, please use the phone in your cabin rather than coming to the office. Just press 1 and you'll get me. If I'm not there, tell your steward you need to see the manager and he or she will look for me. Unit 3, Track 9 Right, let me give you a bit more information about the trip. The first part of our journey is from London to Paris, going through the Channel Tunnel. It will take us just over an hour to get to the tunnel, including a short stop before we get there to pick up some more passengers. From there, it'll be another three hours to Paris, so we're looking at four hours altogether, give or take a few minutes. A quick bit of advice about passports. You won't need these until we get to the Italian border, so I suggest you keep them in the safe, which you'll find in your cabin. Ask your steward, that's the person in charge of your carriage, for a key. That way, you won't need to carry them with you all the time. Now, meals. As I said earlier, breakfast tomorrow morning will be in your cabins and this will be served at about 7.30, 7.45, so you'll be able to enjoy it as we travel along the southern French coast. Lunch is at one o'clock in the restaurant car, and dinner is at eight o'clock, although we'd like you all to be at your table about 15 minutes earlier, at a quarter to, if you could. When we get to the Italian border tomorrow morning, our train will change engines and we'll also be getting a new crew. We'll be taking advantage of the stop to have a look around. I've arranged a visit to the local market, a museum and a castle. This will take about four hours with a break for coffee in a local cafe and we'll be back on the train in time for lunch. A few quick rules. Some of you might have brought your own food or drink on board. That's fine, but could we ask that you consume it in your cabins and not in the restaurant or lounge? Could we also ask you to make sure your cabin windows are closed when you're not in your cabin? And whatever you do, don't get off the train until we reach the Italian border. Apart from the border, and one or two other places which I'll tell you about, any stops we make will only be for a few minutes. I'd hate to leave anyone behind. All right, so moving on from the Italian border, we'll be heading right into the... Track 22, Unit 4, Listening, Exercise 3. Good morning. Can you tell me about the ticket options, please? Certainly. We've got various options, depending on whether you want to just visit parts of the exhibition or all of it. It's organised into various different sections. 
and because it's so large, you may not be interested in everything or have time for everything. You can buy tickets just for the sections you want to visit, and that makes it a lot cheaper. Well, um, I've really come here to see things to do with electronics. Right. Then I think you'll find the first part of the exhibition as you go in is quite relevant. It's all about electronics and how we can use them to protect the world around us. You know, the environment and what we can do to avoid damaging it further. Protecting the environment. That sounds interesting. Anything I should specially look out for there? There are lots of new devices. One which fascinated me when I went round was a new instrument for measuring how the temperature of the ocean changes at different levels. And this can be done from a ship on the surface right down to the bottom. Great. I'll look out for that. OK. And I see you've got your son with you, which is nice because... The subject of the next section is all about different things for keeping an eye on your children and looking after their safety. It contains a range of things, from electronic instruments used in medicine to children's electronic games, and even a number of new devices to prevent children from having an accident when they're at home. That sounds useful. Yes. There's even an invention for older children. You'll see a demonstration of it while you're there which helps parents to make sure their kids are going to school. Really useful in families where both parents work. It sort of electronically tells parents about their kids' attendance and sends them a signal via the Internet. Very convenient, but my son is a bit young to worry about that yet. Are there any other sections which feature electronics? Sure. There's another section... It's the third you come to, I think, which should interest everyone. It contains lots of new electronic instruments or devices for looking after and working with money. You know, uh, like that thing you must have heard of, which counts what you're putting into your supermarket trolley and adds up the bill as you go around. Right. Money. That sounds interesting, too. Well, thanks for the information. I'd like tickets for myself and my son for those three sections then, please. Tract 22, Unit 4, Listening, Exercise 3. Good morning. Can you tell me about the ticket options, please? Certainly. We've got various options depending on whether you want to just visit parts of the exhibition or all of it. It's organised into various different sections, and because it's so large, you may not be interested in everything or have time for everything. You can buy tickets just for the sections you want to visit, and that makes it a lot cheaper. Well, um, I've really come here to see things to do with electronics. Right. Then I think you'll find the first part of the exhibition as you go in is quite relevant. It's all about electronics and how we can use them to protect the world around us. You know, the environment and what we can do to avoid damaging it further. Protecting the environment. That sounds interesting. Anything I should specially look out for there? There are lots of new devices. One which fascinated me when I went round was a new instrument for measuring how the temperature of the ocean changes at different levels. And this can be done from a ship on the surface right down to the bottom. Great. I'll look out for that. OK. And I see you've got your son with you, which is nice because the subject of the next section is all about different things for keeping an eye on your children and looking after their safety. It contains a range of things, from electronic instruments used in medicine to children's electronic games, and even a number of new devices to prevent children from having an accident when they're at home. That sounds useful. Yes. There's even an invention for older children. You'll see a demonstration of it while you're there, which helps parents to make sure their kids are going to school. Really useful in families where both parents work. 
it sort of electronically tells parents about their kids' attendance and sends them a signal via the internet. Very convenient, but my son is a bit young to worry about that yet. Are there any other sections which feature electronics? Sure. There's another section. It's the third you come to, I think, which should interest everyone. It contains lots of new electronic instruments or devices for looking after and working with money. You know,、uh, like that thing you must have heard of, which counts what you're putting into your supermarket trolley and adds up the bill as you go around. Right. Money. That sounds interesting too. Well, thanks for the information. I'd like tickets for myself and my son for those three sections, then, please. Track twenty three, Unit four, listening, exercise five. Excuse me. Yes.、Uh, before you go through, I wonder if you could help us by answering a few questions for a survey. It won't take long. No problem. We're not in any hurry. Fine. Thanks. Now、uh, let's look at the questions. Okay. Here they are.、Uh, first one. Why are you visiting the exhibition? Well, I want to keep up with the latest developments in electronics. You know, I was recommended by a friend to come here and see what new devices and inventions are coming out and learn a bit. I mean, I don't generally go shopping for new electronics. I'm not the sort of person who goes out and buys all the latest gadgets. The prices are too high when they're new, but it interests me, and I thought also there would be things which would interest my son, and he'd enjoy it as well. So that's why we're here. Okay. And here's a question to find out what sort of consumer you are. Have you bought any electronics recently? Recently, sure. I was thinking of buying a new calculator for the office, but I decided it wasn't really necessary because I can do all the calculations just as easily on a computer. Anyway, I got a new laptop recently because you know they have so many applications and they don't take up much space either. Better to have lots of things on the same device, I think. The other thing I bought. Was a present for my husband's birthday. I thought it would be nice to have a record of our holidays, so I bought him a camera, and I'm hoping to get him more interested in photography. I'm not very keen on the sort of pictures you can take with a mobile phone. You see, I think it's better to go for higher quality. Right. And here's a question about this building. I know you haven't had a chance to look around a lot yet, but at first sight, what do you think of it? Oh, it looks pretty good to me. It's got lots of natural light, so you don't have to put up with lots of electric lighting, which can be quite tiring on the eyes. It feels very large and spacious, which is great because although it's full of activity and quite noisy. It doesn't feel too crowded. Also, when you look up at the ceiling near the entrance with the design of stars and planets on it, that's something I really like. I'm not so keen on those revolving doors, though. I always feel I'm going to get stuck in one. <laughs> and did you have any difficulties getting to the exhibition? Well, coming at this time of day, the roads weren't too busy, so that was all right, and there were plenty of signposts, so the car park was easy to find. The only problem was it was full when I arrived. I guess I should have come earlier, so I had to find another one, quite a long walk away, which was a pity. Then we had to stand outside for quite a long time, queuing to get in. This exhibition is pretty popular. That was a bit of a problem, because my son gets impatient. But fortunately, it wasn't raining. 
otherwise we might have gone home. Track 24, Unit 4, Speaking, Exercise 2. Well, I'm going to talk about my digital camera. Actually, I've got it here because it's very small and fits in my bag. But it takes great pictures. Everything is automatic, so I just point it and press the button. I've had this camera for two years. My parents gave it to me for my birthday when I was 18. I didn't ask for a camera, so it was a complete surprise. But it's been really useful. Since I got the camera, I've carried it with me everywhere I've gone on a holiday. For example, in July, I went on holiday to Denmark and Sweden. They're lovely places. And in summer, it's still light at midnight, so I got some great photos there. Also, I've taken lots of photos of special occasions. For instance, when my grandmother was 70, I took photos of her party. I use it to remember things, so I put all the photos on my computer. Then I upload them onto Facebook, so my friends can see them. I've used the camera so often because it's easy to use and I carry it everywhere. I just enjoy taking photos of places which are beautiful and people I'm with everywhere they're happy. I've taken more than a thousand photos since July. In all, it's been a really great present and I've really enjoyed using it. Track 25, Unit 4 Pronunciation. Exercise 1. I've had this camera for two years. My parents gave it to me for my birthday when I was 18. I didn't ask for a camera, so it was a complete surprise. But it's been really useful. Track 26. Unit 4. Pronunciation. Exercise 2. Since I got the camera, I've carried it with me everywhere I've gone on holiday. For example, in July, I went on holiday to Denmark and Sweden. They're lovely places, and in summer, it's still light at midnight, so I got some great photos there. Unit 4, Track 10 Hello, Joe. Good to see you again. Hi, you too. So, how did you get on with the devices we asked you to test for us? Oh, fine. Well, mostly. OK, well, we'll come back to those in a minute. First of all, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions about your attitude to new electrical products. This will help us with future marketing. Is that OK? Sure. OK. First of all, how much do you spend on electronic items a month? Hmm. Let me see. I don't earn a lot, so I don't have much left after I've paid for things like rent, bills, food and so on. Anything else is a luxury. <laughs> so... I'd guess about 5%, maybe 10% of my monthly salary. Mm -hmm. All right. And what influences you in your choice of product? Say you wanted a new mobile phone. How would you decide which one to buy? Well, first I look at reviews on the internet, you know, what other customers think about them. Mm -hmm. um, then I'll ask my friends what they think. In fact, their opinions are probably more important than anything. How much does advertising help you choose a product? Oh, I think that depends on how the product is advertised. 
and who is advertising it. For example? Well, if it's someone I respect, you know, like a famous sportsman or actor, that can certainly make a difference. I know it shouldn't, really, but it does. <laughs> And where do you buy most of these products? The high street? The internet? Most people seem to avoid shops these days, don't they? For things like that. They think they can get things cheaper on the internet. Right. But I find that if you say to a shop assistant that you can get a new camera, for example, for £100 on the internet, they'll often match the price. Mm. So that's where I go. Any other advantages? Well, uh, you get personal service and you don't have to wait for the product to be delivered. Ordering online means you have to wait, sometimes for ages, to get the things you've just bought. I hate that. I guess I'm just very impatient. <laughs> OK, one final question. Do you ever see a product and think, I've absolutely got to get one of those? Oh, all the time, especially if I'm walking past a shop and I see a new electronic item in the window, especially if it's unusual, you know, something I've never seen before. It takes a lot of willpower. Unit 4, track 11. Right, Joe, let's move on. Now, we gave you three items to test for us. Let's start with the mobile phone. OK. Well, it has its good points and its bad points. The purple and silver make it quite eye-catching. You know, modern, exciting. Hmm. Right. Anything else? Well, it's very small, isn't it? I know people say small is good, but in this case I think you might have gone too far. In what way? It can be a bit difficult to use. Especially if you've got big hands like mine. <laughs> you press one key and you end up pressing another at the same time. On the other hand, thanks to the oval design, it does fit comfortably in your hand. Mobiles are usually sort of rectangular, aren't they? I think this is much better. OK. What else? Um, when I was sending text messages, I had real problems seeing what I was writing. It's not that the screen was too small just that it was a bit dark. Mm -hmm. If you're outside, you can hardly see anything on it. Mm -hmm. We added a few things that you don't get on other mobiles. What did you think about those? Ah, right. Well, that noise it makes if you move away from it, mm -hmm. that's really annoying. It's basically a good idea, but I think that after a while it would drive me mad. So you probably wouldn't buy it? Probably not. When I buy a mobile phone, I don't want one that's going to be difficult to operate. There's no point having a phone that looks good if you have to spend ages trying to make a call or send a text message. It's funny, but I find that more expensive mobile phones are more difficult to use than cheaper ones. It should be the other way round. <laughs> so, keep it simple, right? Right. And... I want a phone that doesn't have problems picking up a signal or doesn't cut you off halfway through a call. And all those games and other things you get on a mobile, oh, I really can't see the point in those. Fair point. Next, uh, the digital radio. What did you think? Well, the audio quality was crisp and clear, even if you turned it up really loud. Some sound systems can sound a bit distorted at higher volumes, but not on this one. So. 10 out of 10 for that. Great. The thing is, I'm not sure if it's the area I live in, but the choice of radio stations seemed very limited. Mm -hmm. It didn't make any difference what I did with the aerial or where I put the radio, high up on a shelf, low down on the floor, and there seemed to be a delay when you turned up the volume. What do you mean? Well, when you press the volume control, for example, nothing seems to happen for a few seconds. And the same thing happens when you want to change radio stations. Hmm. OK. The third item was the laptop computer. What's your opinion on that? Oh, I really liked it. <laughs> it's so small, so compact, but easy to use at the same time. I don't think you could make it smaller if you tried. But at £900, 
I'm not sure you'd get many customers. That's a lot of money for a laptop. Bring that down to say four hundred pounds, and things might be different. Any other changes you'd make, like adding more memory, for example? Oh, I think that's fine as it is. Three hundred gigabytes of memory is probably more than enough for most people. <laughs> oh, and incidentally, the way the keyboard folds out so that it's like a full-size one—that's really clever. But the computer doesn't have anywhere you can play CD-ROMs, and I'd include a light in the keyboard so you can use it when it's dark. Well, thanks, Joe, for your comments. I think we'll find those. Unit four, track eleven. Right, Joe. Let's move on. Now we gave you three items to test for us. Let's start with the mobile phone. Okay. Well, it has its good points and its bad points. The purple and silver make it quite eye-catching. You know, modern, exciting. Hmm. Right. Anything else? Well, it's very small, isn't it? I know people say small is good, but in this case, I think you might have gone too far. In what way? It can be a bit difficult to use, especially if you've got big hands like mine. <laughs> you press one key, and you end up pressing another at the same time. On the other hand, thanks to the oval design, it does fit comfortably in your hand. Mobiles are usually sort of rectangular, aren't they? I think this is much better. Okay. What else?、Um, when I was sending text messages, I had real problems seeing what I was writing. It's not that the screen was too small, just that it was a bit dark.、Mm -hmm. If you're outside, you can hardly see anything on it.、Mm -hmm. We added a few things that you don't get on other mobiles. What did you think about those? Ah, right. Well, that noise it makes if you move away from it—that's、mm -hmm. really annoying. It's basically a good idea, but I think that after a while it would drive me mad. So you probably wouldn't buy it. Probably not. When I buy a mobile phone, I don't want one that's going to be difficult to operate. There's no point having a phone that looks good if you have to spend ages trying to make a call or send a text message. It's funny, but I find that more expensive mobile phones are more difficult to use than cheaper ones. It should be the other way round. <laughs> so keep it simple, right? Right. And I want a phone that doesn't have problems picking up a signal, or doesn't cut you off halfway through a call. And all those games and other things you get on a mobile. Oh, I really can't see the point in those. Fair point. Next,、uh, the digital radio. What did you think? Well, the audio quality was crisp and clear. Even if you turned it up really loud, some sound systems can sound a bit distorted at higher volumes, but not on this one. So ten out of ten for that. Great. The thing is, I'm not sure if it's the area I live in, but the choice of radio stations seemed very limited.、Mm -hmm. It didn't make any difference what I did with the aerial or where I put the radio, high up on a shelf, low down on the floor, and there seemed to be a delay when you turned up the volume. What do you mean? Well, when you press the volume control, for example, nothing seems to happen for a few seconds, and the same thing happens when you want to change radio stations.、Hmm. Okay. The third item was the laptop computer. What's your opinion on that? Oh, I really liked it. <laughs> It's so small, so compact, but easy to use at the same time. I don't think you could make it smaller if you tried. But at nine hundred pounds, I'm not sure you'd get many customers. That's a lot of money for a laptop. Bring that down to say four hundred pounds, and things might be different. Any other changes you'd make, like adding more memory, for example? Oh, I think that's fine as it is. Three hundred gigabytes of memory is probably more than enough for most people. <laughs> oh, and incidentally, the way the keyboard folds out so that. It's like a full-size one. That's really clever. But the computer doesn't have anywhere you can play CD-ROMs, and I'd include a light in the keyboard so you can use it when it's dark. Well, thanks, Joe, for your comments. 
I think we'll find those really Track 27. Unit 5. Listening. Exercise 3. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to Animal World. Before you start your visit, I'd just like to tell you about a few special events happening here today. They're all free, and I'd really encourage you to go to as many of them as you can, as I think you'll learn a lot. The first event is called the World of Ants and it's happening this morning, quite soon, in the Insect House which is just a short walk from here. The well-known entomologist Dr David Crocker who many of you will have seen on television is giving a lecture all about ants the different types of ants, how they organise themselves what they eat, their behaviour and so on. It's actually a fascinating subject. So. The World of Ants, a lecture by Dr Crocker in the Insect House, and it starts at 11 o'clock and lasts for 60 minutes. At midday, that's 12 o'clock, there's a film which is just as fascinating, and it's called The Great Migration. This is all about birds and how they migrate across continents and oceans using the sun, the stars and the Earth's magnetic field. As I said, it's a film. An absolutely spectacular film, which all the family will enjoy. Some fabulous photography, and it's on in Theatre C, which you can see here just behind me. So bear that in mind for 12 o'clock. The next event is a demonstration, taking place in the exhibition room, and given by Monica Chadder. It's called Encouraging Garden Wildlife. Monica will be showing you ways of encouraging animals, birds and other wildlife to visit and live in your garden. How to place boxes for nests, what food to put out for them and all sorts of practical advice. That's at 2.30, so just after lunch. The final free event for today is Birds of Prey. Tasha, their keeper, will be giving a display of some of our most magnificent birds and how they fly and I thoroughly recommend this event. The display includes eagles, vultures and owls and will be starting at 3.45 on the lawn outside. It's an unforgettable experience. So remember, on the front lawn at 3.45 to see the birds flying. Track 27. Unit 5. Listening. Exercise 3. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to Animal World. Before you start your visit, I'd just like to tell you about a few special events happening here today. They're all free, and I'd really encourage you to go to as many of them as you can, as I think you'll learn a lot. The first event is called the World of Ants and it's happening this morning, quite soon, in the Insect House, which is just a short walk from here. The well-known entomologist, Dr David Crocker, who many of you will have seen on television, is giving a lecture all about ants, the different types of ants, how they organise themselves, what they eat, their behaviour, and so on. It's actually a fascinating subject. So. The World of Ants, a lecture by Dr Crocker in the Insect House, and it starts at 11 o'clock and lasts for 60 minutes. At midday, that's 12 o'clock, there's a film which is just as fascinating, and it's called The Great Migration. This is all about birds and how they migrate across continents and oceans using the sun, the stars and the Earth's magnetic field. As I said, it's a film. An absolutely spectacular film, which all the family will enjoy. Some fabulous photography, and it's on in Theatre C, which you can see here just behind me. 
So bear that in mind for 12 o'clock. The next event is a demonstration taking place in the exhibition room and given by Monica Chadda. It's called Encouraging Garden Wildlife. Monica will be showing you ways of encouraging animals, birds and other wildlife to visit and live in your garden. How to place boxes for nests, what food to put out for them and all sorts of practical advice. That's at 2.30, so just after lunch. The final free event for today is Birds of Prey. Tasha, their keeper, will be giving a display of some of our most magnificent birds and how they fly, and I thoroughly recommend this event. The display includes eagles, vultures and owls and will be starting at 3.45 on the lawn outside. It's an unforgettable experience. So remember, on the front lawn at 3.45 to see the birds flying. Track 28. Unit 5. Listening. Exercise 5. Now, I'll just give you a few directions before you leave, especially for those of you who are feeling a bit hungry. When you leave the main building, you come to an area where the path divides. If you take the right-hand path, you'll see the lake on your right, and exactly opposite the lake on your left is the gift shop. Apart from selling gifts, it sells snacks, sandwiches and light drinks. Uh, if you walk on past the lake on your right, you'll also see the penguins. Go past the penguins and you'll come to the restaurant, also on your right. Don't go too far or you'll come to the aquarium. The aquarium is on your right at the crossroad. And just over the crossroad, also on your right, is the lion enclosure. If you're thinking of having a picnic, the best place to go is the picnic area. And for this, you need to turn left at the crossroad and walk along a few metres. At the end of the path, you'll find the picnic area on your left. Now, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And once again, I really hope you enjoy your visit. Thank you. Track 29. Unit 5. Speaking. Exercise 3. Which are your favourite animals? Cats. Well, I love my cat because I've had him for nearly a year now. And I love him. He's so beautiful. He's black with a white nose. He sleeps on my bed every night. And he... I'm not sure how you say this, but when he's there... I'm not alone. Hmm. And I'm quite keen on birds. There are lots in the gardens around my house. Which animals don't you like? I hate insects in the summer. They're horrible. <laughs> Why? Well, I live near a large river and there are lots of... I, I don't know what their name is in English. Small insects which bite and come at night. I'm not too keen on flies either. Where are the best places in your country to see wildlife? That's a difficult question. I'm not sure. There are so many places with wildlife, but I'm not sure how easy it is to see the animals because it's really forests with many trees. How popular is watching wildlife in your country? It's hard to say. What is the activity called? Hunting is quite popular for some types of animal, but watching wildlife, I don't think I know if it's popular or not. I think people like to go to zoos, but it's not the same. Track 30. Unit 5. Pronunciation. Exercise 2.
One. I'm not sure how you say this, but when he's there, I'm not alone. Two. I don't know what their name is in English. Three. That's a difficult question. I'm not sure. Four. It's hard to say. Five. What is the activity called? Track 31. Unit 5. Pronunciation. Exercise 4. 1. I've had him for nearly a year now, and I love him. He's so beautiful. 2. I hate insects in the summer. They're horrible. Unit 5, Track 12 Hello everyone, and welcome to our College Natural History Day. You've all got your programme for the day, but let me just give you a bit of information about your options for this morning's sessions, which begin at half past nine. Remember, you need to attend one of these sessions. All right, your first choice is called Dogs Might Fly which will take place in Room 27. Professor Keenan, who you may remember ran a workshop last year on how dinosaurs became extinct, will be giving a lecture on the evolution of animals. In particular, she'll be looking at how they may evolve in the future, and this will be followed by a group discussion where you'll get a chance to ask her questions and offer your own thoughts and opinions on this. So... If the evolution of animals is something you're interested in, head for room 27. We all know that animals communicate with each other, but what about flowers? Your second choice is a video presentation called Flowers Talk. This considers the possibility that plants and flowers do actually communicate with each other. The video is presented by Patrick Bell, who has just written a book on how plants adapt to their natural environment. So it should be very interesting. That will take place in the lecture room. Uh, oh, no, sorry, correct that, here in the main hall. Uh, we've had to move it because the lecture room is being renovated. The third choice is ideal for those of you who want to get a bit of fresh air. We've called it A World in Your Garden which we thought was appropriate as it looks at the sort of things you can find just by stepping out of your front door. Anyway, for those of you interested in getting away from the classroom, Dr Watkins will be taking you on a nature walk through the local park and will be telling you about some of the fascinating animals and plants that live and grow nearby. And it's a lovely day for a walk. The final option, well... You might want to avoid this one if you're frightened of things like snakes, as this is a hands-on workshop where you'll actually get a chance to handle these exotic creatures. It won't just be snakes, however. I believe Tom Howard, our resident reptile expert, has brought some other reptiles along for you to meet, including his pet tortoise Reggie, who is over a hundred years old, and a pet lizard he calls Arthur. So... If you want to meet Reggie and his other reptile friends, head on over to the biology lab at 9.30. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun. For those of you who don't usually use the biology lab, could I remind you that you need to put on one of the white coats by the door before you go in? OK, now we've got some students here from Bardwell College who have joined us. Unit 5, Track 12 Hello everyone, and welcome to our College Natural History Day. You've all got your programme for the day, 
But let me just give you a bit of information about your options for this morning's sessions, which begin at half past nine. Remember, you need to attend one of these sessions. All right. Your first choice is called Dogs Might Fly, which will take place in room 27. Professor Keenan, who you may remember ran a workshop last year on how dinosaurs became extinct, will be giving a lecture on the evolution of animals. In particular, she'll be looking at how they may evolve in the future, and this will be followed by a group discussion where you'll get a chance to ask her questions and offer your own thoughts and opinions on this. So, if the evolution of animals is something you're interested in, head for room 27. We all know that animals communicate with each other, but what about flowers? Your second choice is a video presentation called Flowers Talk. This considers the possibility that plants and flowers do actually communicate with each other. The video is presented by Patrick Bell, who has just written a book on how plants adapt to their natural environment. So it should be very interesting. That will take place in the lecture room. Uh, oh, no, sorry, correct that, here in the main hall. Uh, we've had to move it because the lecture room is being renovated. The third choice is ideal for those of you who want to get a bit of fresh air. We've called it A World in Your Garden, which we thought was appropriate as it looks at the sort of things you can find just by stepping out of your front door. Anyway, for those of you interested in getting away from the classroom, Dr Watkins will be taking you on a nature walk through the local park and will be telling you about some of the fascinating animals and plants that live and grow nearby. And it's a lovely day for a walk. The final option, well, you might want to avoid this one if you're frightened of things like snakes, as this is a hands-on workshop where you'll actually get a chance to handle these exotic creatures. It won't just be snakes, however. I believe Tom Howard, our resident reptile expert, has brought some other reptiles along for you to meet, including his pet tortoise Reggie, who is over a hundred years old, and a pet lizard he calls Arthur. So, if you want to meet Reggie and his other reptile friends, head on over to the biology lab at 9.30. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun. For those of you who don't usually use the biology lab, could I remind you that you need to put on one of the white coats by the door before you go in? OK, now we've got some students here from Bardwell College who have joined us. Unit 5, Track 13. OK, now we've got some students here from Bardwell College who have joined us for today's events. Hello to you all and welcome. Now, before our day begins, you'll need to get a guest badge, which you'll have to wear while you're on the college premises. You can get these from the administration office. To get there from the main hall, leave the hall by the door opposite reception, turn left and just follow the corridor to the end. The administration office is on your right. Don't go any further or you'll be in the sports hall. If you show your guest badge in the cafe, by the way, you'll get a 20% discount on drinks and sandwiches. To get there from the main hall, walk along the corridor between the main hall and reception and turn right. The cafe is through the first door on your left. Directly opposite the cafe, on the same corridor, is the student common room, where you can go to relax and perhaps meet some of our own students. If you have any valuables that you don't want to carry around with you, I suggest you put these in a locker. These are next to the sports hall, opposite the administration office. You can get a key for a locker when you get your guest badge from the administration office. And if you want to use our library, 
leave the main hall by the door opposite the one you came in, that's the door by the bicycle parking area, and walk to the end of the corridor. The library is through the door straight ahead of you.